Hallelujah. Praise God. Are we ready for the word? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let us lift up our Bible. Hallelujah. We're going to say it together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. If you have a Bible, lift it up and say it together. Say it together. Hallelujah. One, two, three. I believe what God is, the word of God is. What God can do, the word of God can do. God's word is God's will and God's will is God's word. Therefore, I have what the Bible says I can have. I am what the Bible says I am. I can do what the Bible says I can do. I present my body as a holy and living sacrifice. Lord Jesus has given me the spirit of power, love and sound mind. I cannot be confused or defeated. I have the mind of Christ. Jesus has made me holy and righteous. I am dead to sin and alive to God. Holy Spirit, help me and speak to me. I choose to receive God's word as bread for today and as seed for tomorrow. I will never be the same again. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, 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 amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Last Sunday, we talked about, we started this sermon series. Isn't it? And the sermon series was Word of Simple. Isn't it? Word of God. We are, we are looking at the Word of God, about the Word of God, so that our life can be according to the Word of God. Isn't it? Sermon says, and last Sunday we talked about, hallelujah. What did we talk about? Anybody remember? Hiding the word in your heart. Hiding the word in the heart, hallelujah. Praise God. And we just thank God for that, hallelujah. I'm going to just, just kind of try to connect uh, that, that passage to the word we're going to talk to today, hallelujah. Praise God. And this is based on this verse that God has given to us, Acts chapter 6, verse number 4, hallelujah, which says, hallelujah, we will devote ourselves. Somebody said devote ourselves. So two things, hallelujah, word and prayer. Somebody say word and prayer. Praise God. Thank you. It's good to see Shalesh Bhai. Praise God. Thank God for the healing. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We'll give ourselves, continue to prayer and the ministry of the word of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. So we're going to focus on the word of God because no matter how mature we get, hallelujah, remember, hallelujah, praise God, not only this gives the birth to us, but this also matures us, this sustains us, and this prepares us as well. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And if we talk about this verse, Psalm 119 and verse number 11, it's a sex song, it's like, yeah, okay, your word, Lord, I have hidden in your heart so that I may not sin against you. Hallelujah. Some of you have started memorizing the scripture. I got the message that on the front page, the reference is right. But when you go inside, the reference is not correct. It's 110, but it's 119. I cannot change the word of God. You know, it's a typo, genuine typo, isn't it? So make sure you memorize it at 119 verse 11, not 110, isn't it? All right, so that's, that's good. Praise God. I've hidden your word in my heart. Hallelujah. So that I may not sin against you. Store the word in the heart. Hallelujah. Somebody says store the word in the heart. Hallelujah. Praise God. See, you cannot store it without memorizing it. Isn't it? You cannot store it without remembering it. Hallelujah. So that you store it in the heart. Hallelujah. Praise God. And today we're going to go on the second part of the word of God from Joshua chapter 1, verse number 8. Verse Joshua chapter 1, verse number 8. You already know that verse. And you know, I know it's not there, but you can have the 41, 41st verse memorized as well, isn't it? Hallelujah. Joshua chapter 1, verse number 8. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let this book of law shall not depart from your mouth. Hallelujah. Now, can you imagine God is giving direction to Joshua uh, to conquer this promised land? And we would expect the direction should be how to fight a war. You know, how to conquer the enemy, how to walk in power, how to strategize, how to win a war. And all those directions should have come. But God gives this direction instead. And the direction is, this book of law shall not depart from your mouth. I want to encourage you, no matter what war we want to fight and become victorious over is, the strategy is the word of God. It is the word of God, hallelujah. The book shall not depart from your mouth. And then he says, but you shall, that's the word, you shall what? Somebody say meditate. Say it loudly, meditate. Meditate, meditate in it, not on it. Meditate in it. How do you meditate? You have to sleep in it. Isn't it? Meditate in it. Day and Day and night. Why do we meditate? So that we may observe to do all that is written in it. For Now this is the blessing. For then you will make your way prosperous. And then 
you will have good success. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. I know we can take this passage of scripture and how to become successful as well. And success is no wrong, isn't it? Praise God. The religion has kind of you know, messed up our thinking process. God desires to bless us. God desires to make our way prosperous. That's why he has given this blessing. God desires to be make us become successful. It is not somebody else's idea. It is the idea of your father that being a child of God, you become successful and you become prosperous. Are we there? Any sons here? Any daughters here? This is your father's plan for you. This is your father's idea for you. This is your father's thought for you. This is his purpose for your future to be successful and to become prosperous. But the key that he gives it to us, hallelujah, and the key is that this word of God shall not depart from your mouth. But you shall meditate upon it day and night. Gujarati wala kudu raat tata divas tenu. Manan kar. Hallelujah. I know it's in India, but still do it, isn't it? Manan kar, I know. Isn't it? Sukar, manan kar. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you. Now listen to this very carefully. We have three sermons exactly. You have to understand these three all sermons are connected. Praise God. Store the word where? Meditate your word where? In the mouth and in the mind. Because this is where you meditate. Are we there? Word where first? Hide in the heart. Meditate, spirit and soul. You know, body we'll talk about next week, okay? Isn't it? The word of God should be where? It should be in your spirit, it should be in your soul, and it should be in your body. Are we there? Hallelujah. How do you have it in your spirit? By hiding the word in your heart. How do you have word in your mind? By meditating upon it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Listen to me. We cannot hide it into our heart without memorizing it. We cannot meditate upon it without memorizing it. Because if we don't remember, then we'll just memorize anything. Mem meditate upon anything, isn't it? See, Christian meditation, hallelujah, is so important and given in the Bible at many places. What is a meditation? A meditation is a time of reflection and contemplation. You think about the word that God has spoken to you over and over and over and over again for yourself. That is what meditation is. The Eastern meditation has creeped in. Why they do meditation? Because they figured out there is something to connect your mental realm with the spirit realm. But their, their access point is demonic. Our access point is spiritual. Our access point is what happens? Why do people want to meditate? Because meditation opens up your mind. Opens up your mind to spirit realms. Isn't it? But when you meditate upon word of God, God opens up your mind to the Holy Spirit. Not just your heart, but also to your mind. It opens up, hallelujah. See, whenever you talk about Eastern meditation, they say you meditate, you know, meditate upon this thing and you invite this and, you know, you will go into some space of tranquility. Float in the air. I say keep floating. Is it? God doesn't ask us to float in the air. If I, if I may say that, isn't it? God asks us to meditate, hallelujah, so that word becomes. See, when you hide the word into your heart, the word becomes part of your being. When you meditate upon the word in your mind, the word of God becomes part of your thinking. Part of your being and part of your thinking. Meditate so that it becomes part of your thinking, hallelujah, praise God. The meditation is so important, hallelujah. See, both Christian and secular meditation, hallelujah, they, they encourage people because it creates mindfulness and reflection. But for us, for, for this, this new age, meditation is, you know, because if you're tired, because you're stressed out, meditate. For them, the whole idea is to escape, to go away from the reality. That's what the meditation is. For us, the meditation is drawing closer to God and to His Word. That's what meditation for us is. Are we there? Is it? We don't have to sit in a certain posture, put a finger in a certain way, and a palati will. You know, meditation is something absolutely different. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The meditation means to gaining deeper understanding on the person of God through His Word. Isn't it? Hallelujah. Meditation happens here. 
See, I want to tell you, whatever God has given to her, every agency of who we are is able to experience the presence and move of God. Are we there? Let's say, I want to, exp I want to tell you, see, why does God has given you the sense of touch? Why? You know? Magarni chamdi game ni api, isn't it? Granana chair, but just saying, isn't it? Why? Because you can experience the touch. Why you experience a touch? When you said you experience a touch, is touch has a different meaning. You feel comfort. You feel somebody is kind of with you. Why touch has been given to us? And that's why God says, you know, you know, he comes around. You know, we talked into, into the book of Revelation. Bible says, he came to the John, and Bible says, he touched the John with his right hand. Why? The point of comfort. Hallelujah. Why? With what? Some physical attribute of touching. Isn't it? So whatever God has given us as capacity to receive and experience the presence of God. I want to tell you, you know, eyes, why? You can see everything, but what? You can see everything, but what, are, what is what the prophet if you don't see God? Isn't it? Eyes are given so to see God. You've been given sense, smell, isn't it? You smell everything, isn't it? Right? Come in my street. You can, Saturday morning, you can smell different breakfasts. One side you can smell solo bhature, other side you can smell almost kothuro. Yes, it's all different breakfast. And rajma as well, isn't it? The smell is given. Can I tell you, your smell is also a sensory point to experience God. Are we there? You can smell the smell of heaven. Supernaturally. When we allow our senses to be surrendered to God. Are we when this happens, when we continue to meditate upon our, our senses get trained. Let me give you one important thing, hallelujah, praise God. As I said, you hide the word in your heart, which is for your spirit. You meditate the word in your mind, which is for your mind, soul, or soul. And ne next Sunday we'll talk about the body. I want to open this verse for you, hallelujah. First Thessalonians chapter 5, I think you already know it, 23, 24. Isn't it, praise God? But if anybody remember 22, verse number 22? Don't open it, just remember anybody? Okay. It says, abstain from every form of or every appearance of evil. Evil. Abstain from every, not from evil, but every appearance of evil or every form of evil. Abstain from it. Then it says, verse number 23 and verse number 24, it says, Now may the Lord of peace will sanctify you entirely, or whole and whole, some places says. My Lord, of, by the Lord of peace, will what, what does it do? What will he do? Come on, come on, sanctify you. Are we there? Talk to me, talk to me. Oh my goodness, is it? Like the Vicky Pinky, yeah, isn't it? Wow, so much creativity, man. All right, okay, let, okay, coming back, okay. Now the whole, sanctify you entirely. What, who will sanctify us? God will sanctify. And what will he sanctify? He says, so that your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of Christ. The whole purpose of sanctification is so that not we will be super saints. Halo around, you know. Or the ring light, isn't it? Or to carry the ring light at the back. Is it? It's not because so we will be like that. So that we are, our spirit, soul and body, be preserved blameless. It means your spirit, soul and body requires preservation. And preservation happens through sanctification. Sanctification does not make you super saint, but sanctification preserves your spirit, soul and body. Till what? Till, till what time? Till the coming of Lord Jesus Christ or till the appearing of Lord Jesus Christ. And how will that, how will you do it? To so, your schedule now, so you cannot do anything. Verse number 24 says, hallelujah. Now the he who calls is, is faithful and he also will do it. Now be with me, be with me. Okay, one idea. God wants to sanctify us. Gujarati ma kaise ke shanti no dev tamne va pura pavitra karo ke tamaro atma prana shari dev na auta sudhi nirdosh rakhwa ma Are we there? Isn't it? Or some puna rakhwa maave. Isn't it? Praise God. Why he wants to sanctify us? Hallelujah. How does he sanctify us? Hallelujah. Praise God. John chapter 17, verse number 17. 42nd verse. Talis take is a mode. Update Talis na bed Talis. 42nd verse. John chapter 17, verse number 17. Simple verse. Hallelujah. Jesus says to Father, Jesus is praying to Father. John chapter 17 is a high priestly prayer. Isn't it? We're going to go, we're going to develop ourselves. So this year we're going to do it. 40 verses. Are we there? Next year we're going to do more verses. Then we're going to do chapters. Are we there? Chapter. See, everybody knows Psalm 23. You know, Psalm 120, a lot of us know. 
is it so we it's, it's not difficult to then we start start memorizing the passages and the thoughts of god so this example philippians chapter 4 verse 9 to you know we talk about you know for god so highly exalted himself that he the whole passage 9 to 12 you memorize it is that raise god same way john 17 and then you start memorizing what book talks about what is it so when's the wedding of cana which chapter yeah john chapter john chapter 2 or yeah but uh, and then then you 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 uh, uh, where, where is the crucifixion of lord jesus in book of matthew matthew 26 you know like so you you start rem- remembering you know you know where it is what are we there is it you know where is the fruit of the spirit is it galatian ne bhi zarur hai na pbc ne bhi zarur hai the fruit of the spirit you know so you you know certain thing you know where is the love chapter first corinthian 13 is it so you now where is the communion chapter first corinthian 11 is it you know praise god so we going to do that and we going to develop that you know praise god thank you jesus because bible says the time will come the word will be taken away so we are not re- yes we have been given a book but we are not relying on the book we are relying on the spirit of god to have the book soaked into our heart and mind okay john 17 17 jesus is praying to father for his disciple the whole chapter jesus prayed little bit for himself and most for the disciple he begins with father glorify your son he asks father glorify your son because the time has come father say i'll do that and then he talks about his disciples and by the virtue of disciples he has prayed for all future generations if you want to know what jesus is praying for you read john chapter 17 that's what jesus is praying for you if you want to know simple term what is god's will for your life read john chapter 17 this is what god wants to uh, wants will in your life jesus in john chapter 17 jesus says father let them be one as you and i are one that's god's will for our life are we there praise god now jesus says to father father sanctify them with truth first the second chapter 522 says the god of peace himself will sanctify you god says sanctify them with the how do you, how will he sanctify us with the truth and then he says what is the truth your word is truth your word is truth hallelujah praise god what will be sanctified first the second chapter by your spirit your soul and your body will be sanctified through the word of god so this is not just for one part of your life this is for existence of your life this is for your being this is for your thinking and this is for your living being thinking and living are we there praise god thank you jesus thank you lord hallelujah it's very important hallelujah praise god thank you jesus that this is what god wants to do out of our life hallelujah praise god thank you see what is the purpose of a church what is the purpose of a christian life what is the purpose of fellowship you know there is four four purpose simple purpose okay number one purpose sinners need to be saved are we there first of all repent for the kingdom of god is near sinner needs to be saved Now what do you do with the saved people? You know, do something. You know, they will not just do it. So saved people need to be transformed, isn't it? Because we are saved as is, but God doesn't keep us as is. He transforms us. He changes us. So number one, sinners need to be saved. Second thing, saved need to be transformed. Now transformation thing you do so far one way. Now your mind is transformed. You know that God is the author and creator of all things. You know God is the head. You know everything is you know who God ship is. Hallelujah. So now transform need to be empowered. The church that does not empower his people, I must say that it's a weak church. The reason is Hallelujah. See, orphan spirit holds everything to himself. The son spirit give it to everybody. Jesus did not help. See, Jesus did not say, "Father, I am your son." Now anybody comes after you. after me they shall not be the son they shall be the stepson but he doesn't do that he shares his sonship with us can you imagine and we we are we are so afraid to share the position <laughs> he shares sonship with us we are called now sons of god with jo jesus christ okay hallelujah so sinners needs to be saved needs to be transform need to be empowered empowered for what empowered so that they may do good works for the glory of most high god so they may cast out demons so they may heal for the sick so they may stretch out they will share gospel they will heal people you know they will do everything that's what needs to happen and let me tell you now we think empowered is the end of it but it's not because if you read epistles of paul 
after all the empowering, if you see at the end time, he starts out writing something simple writing. Is that simple? It means he thinks, you know, you can be empowered, but if your character is not right, the empowerment will not be good. So the fourth goal, fourth goal is empower should be the should be preserved through character and humility. Through character, because once you have power, it's hard to have humility. Isn't it? Hallelujah. Huh? So empower should be preserved. Somebody say preserved. The God of peace himself sanctify you and he will preserve you blameless. Hallelujah. How we are preserved? Through character. Through humility. Humility is a safeguard. Wear it on. It protects us. It helps us not to fall. Is that, are we there so far? I know we are going to talk about our God. Okay. So today's message is hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. The reason that I mention all those things so we understand the importance of meditation. Today's message is meditating on God's word. Meditating on. Tell your neighbor, meditating on God's word. Okay, praise God. Thank you. So we're going to talk about simple message. I know we're a little bit late. Are you okay? Because God has put certain things on my heart. We're going to just go a little bit over time. Praise God. And I thank you for that. Hallelujah. It's easy to ask from the pulpit. People always say yes. You know, they never heard anybody say no. You know, guest pastor said, they have given me 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Pastor, five minutes only. You okay? How do I say no to him? You're not going to say no, isn't it? So, but that's not my purpose. I know, I know you, you, you are nice people and you're hungry for the word. Okay. Number one point, blessing on meditating the word. Somebody say blessings on meditating the word. Are we there so far? Blessing on meditating. We can also teach how to meditate. Okay. Praise God. Meditating on the word. Hallelujah. And I'm deliberately speaking, meditating on the word because it can be taken out of context. I say, talking on meditation. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 24, verse number 63. Genesis chapter 24, verse number 63. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field in the evening. Does your Bible say that? Isaac went out in the field to do what? To meditate. Come on, come on, answer me, answer me. Talk to me. It's out there now. You got to talk to me. Is it? Is it? Isaac went out in the field to do what? To meditate. Hallelujah. To meditate. And I believe if I understand Isaac's life from the word of God, Isaac had seen it somewhere. Isaac must have seen somebody else doing this part. And I think, you know, he must have seen Abraham meditating as well. So Isaac goes out in the field to Meditate. Somebody say meditate. What is he meditating upon? There is no Tanakh given. There is no Torah given. There is no written word of God. Written word of God did not exist till Moses came and he read down all five books. Now this guy is in Genesis chapter 12. How he's going to know what happened 1 to 11? He doesn't know anything. So what is he meditating upon? When you don't know the word of God, then people meditate on the ways of God. What Isaac meditated upon, how awesome God is and what he has done. One thing for sure is meditating. Thank God for that lamb. Otherwise, I was gone. Isn't it? Isn't it? Thank God for my mother's prayer. I think she must have prayed for that lamb more. Isn't it? So he's meditating upon the ways of God. How awesome God is. If you remember this time, Sarah has died. In fact, the Bible says Sarah has already died. Isaac is sad. He's meditating upon the word of God. No matter what part of life you are going through, the best place to be is to be found meditating upon the word of God. His mother has died. Bible says he needs comfort. If you read the whole passage, Bible talks about it. Then Sarah came and he was comforted. Sorry, Rachel came and he was comforted. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, Bible says when he was meditating. Somebody say while meditating. Uh, so this is a physical example. It is well, something is happening in the spirit realm. While meditating, he lifted his eyes and looked. So number one thing you can do, in meditation you can look at things. In meditation, God will show you things. Are we there? Anybody? Anybody? When you meditate upon God, God will start showing you things. Sometimes we see it, but we don't comprehend it because we are not used to seeing it. I pray in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Now anytime you read the scripture and meditate upon it in the quietness of your heart, you will start seeing things what God shown you. The scripture will not just be read, it will be shown to you. It will be shown to you. It will be shown to you. Hallelujah. He lifted his eyes and he saw camels. Isn't it? And camels were coming. In the Bible says only camels were coming. Who likes to see camels? But it's not about camels. Who is riding on the camel? Who is coming? 
Rebecca is coming. His future wife is coming. Hallelujah. Three things are happening while Rebecca is coming, while he's meditating. Listen to me very carefully. Number one, hallelujah, camels are bringing what? Camels, camels are bringing Isaac's future. Because through Rebecca, he will have children, he will have generation, and his generation will be blessed. So when you meditate, you can see your future. Are we there? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay. You can see your future. Second thing, hallelujah. Praise God. When Rebecca is coming, hallelujah, Rebecca is going to be Isaac's wife. It means she's going to be as there that God has promised to him. So when you meditate and you lift up your eye, you also see your help coming. You can also see your help coming. Now, Rebecca is Isaac's divine help given by God. Are we there? So number one, what is coming? Isaac's future is coming. Isaac's help is coming. And third thing, Bible says right after this, the Isaac brought Rebecca in the tent and he was comforted. His comfort was also coming. He's come, well, I pray in the name of Lord Jesus, as you meditate upon your word, when the word of God, you will experience and you will see, hallelujah, your future, your health, and your comfort coming to you from the presence of Most High God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let me open you one more scripture, hallelujah, which you would have known as well, hallelujah. And I think some of you would have memorized Psalm chapter 1. There's only six verses. It is 1, 2, 3. We may know easily. He says, Psalm chapter 1. Hello. Title Sathya Bhi Apishya, isn't it? Okay. Psalm chapter 1, is it? The first time I ever preached in India, I preached on Psalm chapter 1. God bless those people. I don't even remember what I preached, but the word of God is powerful because when you are weak, at least the word of God is powerful. So if you don't know what to preach, just speak the word of God. Isn't it? Because the word of God is powerful, you are weak. Isn't it? Hallelujah. Are we there? Everybody there? Okay, we're going to read this verse together. Uh, Psalm chapter 1, verse 1 and 2 and the 3. Number 1. Okay, let's read together. 1, 2, 3. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of our godly, nor stands in the path of the sinner, nor sits in the seat of the scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water that brings forth fruits in its season whose leaf also shall not weather and whatever he does shall prosper hallelujah thank you jesus thank you lord blessed is him blessed is the man and blessed is the woman hallelujah hallelujah three things they do not do hallelujah. number one hallelujah they do not walk, do not sit, and do not stand at certain places. Hallelujah. Praise God. But what do they do? They meditate. Whose This delight is in the law of the Lord. And on the word that meditate day and night. And then he says verse number 3. Listen to this very carefully. For he shall be like a tree. So when you meditate, you are like a tree. When you meditate, you are like a tree. Because that's what word says. He shall be like a tree. Tree what? Tree planted by river of water. Tree planted by river of water. Now listen to this very carefully. Hallelujah. Praise God. Plant depends on two things. Number one, water and nutrients. Sunlight is there. Yes, it's given. Okay. Water and nutrients. Water comes from rain. Isn't it? Water in the form of the rain and nutrients in the form of the soil. You cannot grow the plant in the air. It needs soil. So if you want to grow fruits, Havamana would I. We ground it in the soil. We can grow the fruit. Water is in the form of the rain and nutrient in the form of the soil. What do you do when there is drought? There is no rain. It means the plants don't have access to the water and plants cannot thrive, cannot succeed, cannot flourish, cannot do anything. But Bible says the one who is meditating upon the word of God is like the one who is planted by river of water. Isn't it? What does it mean? It means this tree is experiencing drought like any other tree. But the only difference in this tree is this tree meditates upon the word of God. When the meditation happens, the root starts going down into the excess point where the rivers of water flow. Jesus says there's rivers of water that flows out of your body. When you meditate, the roots goes out and excess the rivers of water. So even when there is no rain from outside, 
all outside circumstances does not provide a rain that is needed for you to progress and excel in your life there is no source of that provision then what do the tree do tree goes and reach out to the roots and the root that has gone down it draws water from the rivers of rivers of living water which is very underneath it so what is mean when you meditate upon the word of god and it was the difference between you and somebody who doesn't difference is not found when there is rain difference is found when there is drought difference is not found when the when the economy is booming difference is not when the economy is not booming difference is not found when there is no pandemic difference is found when there is pandemic why but what happens the person who does not meditate upon all they will wither and they will not draw fruit but the person who meditates what they will do there is no rain there is no nutrients they will grow the roots and draw the water draw the water from the word of god and while doing that even though there is no rain they their leaf shall not still wither even though there is no rain they will shall still bear fruit you know i i we've been prayed with the prayer that you know you know uh, <clears throat> serve in season and out of season how do you serve out of season by relying on the word of god hallelujah are we there thank you jesus i pray that hallelujah that you will reach out when you meditate meditates makes you reach out to the source of living water hallelujah let me tell you this way when things go wrong when things are not right isn't it hallelujah praise god you still be green and fruit bearing because you are tapping onto the reserve of the word of god through meditation it does not go away it remains with you hallelujah are we there praise god it's so important hallelujah praise god i have heard so many testimonies of people who are in jails for for jesus is name sake we might never go to jail you know the only thing they survived upon they survived upon the word of god they have memorized the scripture they have survived upon the word of god is right let me tell you you know let me tell you, you know sometimes our life becomes so sanitized when i say sanitized mean so perfect to the point of our planning is it and nothing wrong i'm i'm absolutely nothing wrong i'm not saying that it's wrong it's absolutely good but sometimes life can be real messy you know even in a church you know we 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 experience that certain people go through a life changing sickness out of nowhere how do you deal with that how do you deal with a child that you have after so many prayers go through a pro how, what do you do do you ask god he is unfair do you try to figure out on it what do you do how do you, let, let's say you know you waiting for the answer but how do you survive your sanity during that time how do you still remain fruit bearing how do you still remain green that time during that time the only way you can do it definitely we can talk about fellowship definitely we can talk about prayer but bible says the one who meditates upon the word of god his leaves shall not wither you know when the circumstances changes beyond your control what do you do you meditate upon the word of god yeah, i i just want to encourage somebody let this listen to this very carefully you know whatever thought process is lot of time not everybody's but sometimes our thought process we are waiting for situation to improve then we become green but that's not the biblical pattern the biblical pattern is whether whatever situation is there or not we remain green because we are meditating upon the word of god isn't it we we expect you know somebody to fix that my job my boss has to fix that brother to fix the economy everybody need to fix things then i no 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 you meditating upon the word of god let me tell you this book was written and be meditated by the people who have gone through the worst of the situation into their life the only reason they remain sane because they meditated upon the word of god hallelujah praise god thank you jesus thank you lord you know one eight promises success and prosperity along with it isn't it so that's a blessing that comes with meditation another verse i want to talk about luke chapter 2 luke chapter 2 verse number 19 i know it's not christmas but still but mary kept all these things Mary kept all these things, and what did she do? She pondered in her heart. Mary is thinking, you know, Gabriel came. You know, the Bible says she was thinking, what kind of salutation is this thing? She is pondering. You know, whether she is young or not, that's for sure. But she is a thinking woman. That's for absolutely true. Yeah, she is an intelligent woman. She is a godly woman. And what does she do? She meditate. What kind of greeting Gabriel told her? 
what kind of you know shepherd came and shepherd says you know he's the son of god what kind of thing it is constantly she is meditating upon can i tell you not just on her own revelation but whatever also god has spoken to her through other people are we there not just on what god told you but what god had told you through people shepherds told her certain things magi told her certain things and bible says she kept thinking about it kept pondering about it hallelujah praise god when life must have gone tough she would say don't worry don't worry meditate about you know shepherd told that he is going to be like this a mary said this blessing sorry anna said this blessing simeon said this blessing constantly meditating upon what has been spoken over her child thank you jesus thank you lord hallelujah praise god let, let me tell you one more thing before i go hallelujah praise god thank you jesus and there's there's one term i'm going to use and the term is called overthinking let me say it again overthinking anybody what is overthinking and there is also underthinking but i'm not addressing that <laughs> people don't think i don't think anything i say it looks like it for sure we you know what is overthinking is overthinking is sometimes you already know the answer of certain things but thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking you know sometimes we are doing overthinking to delay the doing what are you doing thinking oh lambu chalu dos vicharano the number one reason we overthink because we are delaying doing second thing second thing overthinking what does overthinking does just you know it already overthinking causes stress nobody i am so excited i am so i just think about this subject whole night and i am so relaxed now i was stressed out why because overthinking you know then overthinking leads to imagination au thavu was said la ana au kar overthinking leads to all those things which disturbs our peace so now what is overthinking is can i tell you something what is overthinking is meditating on the things of mankind overthinking is nothing but meditating you're thinking the same thing you're meditating 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 trying to figure out you know what somebody has done why this happened this that so much overthinking can i tell you the solution of overthinking is meditating upon the word of god overthinking leads to stress meditation leads to peace overthinking leads to anxiety meditation leads to comfort anybody anybody wants to apply that in your life isn't it hallelujah overthinking just makes us anxious more and more you know acidity thege overthinking now i'm i'm serious about it seriously the acidity is caused by stress as well you know if you want to know by chemistry i can explain to you, you know you know enzymatic pattern and all those things but i'm not going to bore you to death for that isn't it when you meditate upon the word of god it has exactly a reverse effect what an overthinking does okay let me say one more thing one more thing we use this word and i am not undermining this word listen to me very carefully those men we use we hear this word a lot of time mental health and well being i am not undermining it so don't don't misunderstand mis misquote me i am not undermining it because right now our mental health is at attack that's why mental health is an issue and second thing those who are treating the mental health are also are taking the mental health because they are not treating it they are just putting a bandage on it isn't it and they are treating with the things to suppress the all thinking process that leads you to other issues are we there i want to tell you for the church i'm not saying the church cannot have mental health issue you know i'm not saying that but if you're experiencing anything about mental health you know any anxiety is creeping in your life any stress any sleeplessness anything all those things the cure is meditating upon the word of god meditating upon the word of god see philippians chapter 4 god paul gives exhortation to the philippian church and we know that first three four small exhortation come in one small language rejoice always pray without ceasing you know so all those things comes and then he says you know don't be anxious for anything let your prayer request be known to all you know uh, with prayers and supplication all those things let's read let's read couple of verses after that what does he say hallelujah philippians chapter 4 verse 8 and 9 finally brethren it means chelle stress thai gai tasu ukhad li du okay let me tell you now how to fix this now Finally, brethren and sisters, 
वॉट एवर थिंग्स आर ट्रू वर्ड ऑफ गॉड इज ट्रू बाइबल सेज लेट गॉड बी ट्रू एंड एवरी मैन बी लाइर सो वर्ड ऑफ गॉड इज ऑलवेज ट्रू इज नॉट इफ यू एनी कन्फ्यूजन वर्ड ऑफ गॉड इज ऑलवेज पास्ट कैन बी रॉन्ग वर्ड ऑफ गॉड इज ट्रू आर वी देर आई मेन टू दैट वॉट एवर थिंग्स आर नोबल it means something that is good towards somebody else you cannot noble to yourself i am so noble i said let somebody else say that because noble is being to somebody isn't it whatever things are just means of justice isn't it whatever things are pure which is not maligned which is not uh, 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 mixed with something else whatever things are lovely whatever things are good report if anything there is any virtue it means any good character if you find in anybody if there is anything praiseworthy meditate on this things okay let me let me just give you example how to do that i look at trufaina bhavi a uh, trufaina bhavi is a good example is right praise god and i cannot you know if if at all i can find any fault in her bible says i need to find what is true in her what is noble in her what is just in her what is lovely in her what is praiseworthy in her and i need to meditate upon that when i look at the world when i look at my family when i look at my children when i look at around when i look at the church and you look at your pastor isn't it you think on those things which is true which is noble which is praiseworthy which is of good report and not just think but that's how you cure your mental illness that's how you get the mental peace because you're focusing on things anybody there hallelujah praise god thank you jesus are we there meditate upon these things hallelujah praise god thank you jesus see why it is written for you to meditate because you have to practice that thing that's how you will learn it it does not come automatically when you get saved it does not get now you can meditate no you have to learn to meditate are we there okay second thing principles of meditation meditation means three things principle of meditation or principle of meditating on god's words what is meditation mean you know uh, there was there was the kids did it he likes to chew on the word of god is it meditate mean to chew to how many like steak okay how many like medium rare steak because that's more important than eating a steak <laughs> okay any other version you are not doing justice to yourself okay if you like a medium rare steak the best part about that steak is that bite boy you want to go back to again and go back to again that's why that 10 ounce is not enough isn't that's why you go to for the porterhouse steak or what, what did we eat what? porterhouse right porterhouse steak isn't it that chuck the huge ones why because you need to bite on it and you need to chew on it anybody enjoys the food that is already in the stomach i am asking seriously was gaikali khichdi yahan padi mast lage अंदर क्या नहीं मस्त लागे मस्त क्या लागे मोड़ा मैं दैट अमेजिंग मोड़ा मैं वर्ड क्या मस्त लागे वेन यू मेरी ट्रेड इट्स इन योर माउथ तेरे मस्त लागे आर वी दे हले लिया मेडिटेशन इज नंबर वन थिंग मीन्स चुईंग द वर्ड ऑफ गॉड सी लॉर्ड ऑफ टाइम थिंग चुईंग टू डाइजेस्ट but i want to tell you that steak you are chewing you are not rushing to digest it you want to chew it isn't it you are not rushing down the throat ke pati ja to puru tha ke digest it no you want to chew it same way you are meditating about the word not to digest the word but just to chew the word when you chew you get the juice out of it the taste out of it everything better comes out of it it is good for your soul why because you are chewing on it are we there praise god second second main meaning of meditation is hallelujah you know uh, we come from uh, the great country called india is right and there is a there is a national animal that nobody can touch and i just talk about the steak but we are not going to start any controversy here when they are alive when they are not steak <laughs> there is a word in gujarati called wagodu have you seen it i have seen it i have little kids and i have nothing to do and then you see and when you go down so there are five guys they are doing this this amazing afternoon meeting and they are looking at each other and you think you are talking they are not talking they ate three days before that plastic bag you know they are bringing it out 
and they are like chewing on it again and again and again and again. Not because the plastic bag was bad, no? because that their, their stomach is designed such a way, they have four or five chamber stomach, they bring it out and they chew it is already chewed before. It sounds gross, isn't it? Don't do it, isn't it? Yeah, don't do it with the food, exactly, yeah. Please, and especially when I'm sitting at your table, please don't do it. But that's what when God says meditating upon the word is means chewing the cud. It means you heard the word today. You heard your word yesterday. You are reading the whole, you know, you know, the, the 90 days New Testament reading, you know, book of Acts, you are reading through that. God spoke to you one word. You know, pastor never mentioned that word. You never read about it before, but now God spoke to you. Now you say, okay, God spoke to me. I'm going to write it down. Write down on a cue card, write down on a promise card, put it, stick it on a sticky note, and put it in your mirror, you're driving. Man, God, this is what God is saying. Like, I'll just talk about myself, First Thessalonians chapter 5. God of all peace. Who is God? God of peace. Should I have not peace? I have to have peace because I have God. And God is God of peace. So if I have God, I should have a peace. What I'm doing, I'm meditating upon it. I'm, I'm not just digesting it, I'm bringing it out again. And chewing it again. And chewing it again. When I chew it again and again, I get more juices out of it. I learn to know about God. I, I would love to know about the, His character. I love to know about what He does to me. How this word is blessing me. That's what meditation is. Meditation is, hallelujah, praise God, chewing the curd, bringing it back out and doing it again and again. I give you three words. Okay, one more example I want to give it to you. One more example I want to give it to you. A lot of you are really great cooks. You know? And praise God for that, isn't it? Hospitality is a gift in the Bible as well. So I hope you practice that. Is it? Praise God. But when you want to go, kick, cook, cook a good meal, especially a meat meal, you know, you get the meat and you wash it. And what do you do after that? Marinate it. You know, some of you have very stringent routine. Marinate it. Marinate it a certain way. A lot of people treat it as massaging it, isn't it? Is it? Maram, marinate it. Then the, the cling wrap comes out and then 14 hours nobody touches it. It goes into the darkness. You know, what is happening during that marination process? Whatever is outside goes into the inside. It gets absorbed. So what is meditation? The word of God came here. But when you meditate upon it, it's like marination. Now what's going to, you're going to keep talking, 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 thinking, 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 and it starts seeping into your mind and your heart. Now it is already part, become part of your nature and thinking process. When you marinate any meat with any spices, before you cook it, the spices become part of the meat. The word become part of you when you meditate upon it. Okay, three ways to meditate. Somebody said three ways to meditate. Okay, praise God. Hallelujah. It could be hard, but it's possible because the Bible says God is faithful and he will do it. Okay, so don't get discouraged. Number one, principle of silence. Somebody say it. Silence. Silencio. Silence. When we sit in the presence of God, and I'm talking about presence of God, when you sit in the presence of God in silence, we allow our souls into the stillness in the presence of God. King David said, be still my soul. Why the soul needs to be still? still? So when it is still, God can work into our lives. It seeps into, see one of the greatest examples is King David. You know, you know how many times the, he says in the Bible, you know, O soul, don't do that. O soul, be still. O soul, know that. Be still and know that he is God. David wrote it. Isn't it? Be still and know that he is God. He says, soul, when you are still, you will be able to know a lot of things when you are still. Are we there? Why? Because in the stillness, your soul is not distracted. Psalm 46 and verse number 10, something says something like that. Psalm 46, be still. And know that I am God. Lord, cannot I, can I not know without being still? God says, no, you can know about me, but there's a dimension of my goodness you can experience when you are still. When you are? Gujarat is a chana Exactly, that's what the point is. Be silent before God. Isn't it, Adriya? Psalm chapter 4, verse number 4. It says, be angry and do not sin. Do we have NIV? Anybody has NIV? It says be angry, but if you have NIV or KJV, please read it for me. Psalm 4.4. 4. Yes, please. Tremble, do not sin. 
tremble before God, do not sin. When you are on your, then he says, search your heart and be silent. Search your heart. Let's go back to NKJV again. Yes. Meditate within your heart on your bed. Meditate within your heart. So meditate. Silence is, bedtime is the perfect, you know, start making a routine before you go into bed. Give 15 minutes to God. Just meditate upon His goodness. You know, I know a lot of you are very organized individuals that you plan for next thing and all those, which is good. You know, I, I know that. But I want to say, when you're on the bed, King David said, meditate upon you when I'm on the bed. I'll think about you, Lord. Isn't it? I'll meditate upon it. I'm sitting in the silence. Solitude and silence is very important aspect of our Christian life when we can meditate upon the word of God. We are not doing anything. We're just sitting in this silence and this with word into our mind and just thinking about that without speaking much. You know, Jesus, Jesus had ability to calm his soul. You know, 5,000 feeding, walking on the water, this, that, and just right away he goes into the mountain. And we say, yeah, he went to pray, but I, I, I bet he spent a lot of time in quietness as well. Isn't it? He's meditating upon goodness of God. Hallelujah. Train ourselves to get, see, being still is a gateway to enter the presence of God when you're by yourself. A am I speaking English? Is it, is it understandable? Being still is a gateway to enter the presence of God. Are we there? You experience the powerful presence of God when you start being still in the presence of God. You're not rushing through your prayer. You're not rushing through your Bible reading. You're not, not rushing. You're not thinking or staying thing. But you're just, just, you know, allowing God to speak things. You're allowing, you know, you're allowing yourself to be separated from every distraction devil can bring. You see? And I know our life can be busy. And I'm not undermining that fact. I'm not putting any guilt, shame, condemnation. You know, if you're never meditated, meditate for five minutes. You know, not you know, three hours, five minutes. Forget the cooker, ni visal bagi che. Forget that the close hand. Forget that. Five minutes. Five minutes. Quietness. Lord, it's me and you. Spoke to me. And I bet God will start speaking to you. The word of God starts seeping in your heart and mind. You say, there are many voices in the words that need your attention. There are many noises in the world that needs your attention constantly. Isn't it? Hallelujah. But I want to tell you, when you meditate upon the word of God, that has a powerful result into your own life. It seeps into your life. It is for the well-being. It is, makes you prosper. It is makes you successful. It gives you wisdom. Hallelujah. That's how the spirit of wisdom starts operating into our life when we start meditating upon God's word. Hallelujah. If you've never heard it, don't be, don't be surprised. But try applying it into your life rather than be surprised. So number one in principle is being silent in the presence of God. A principle of Silence. The second thing I'm going to say, hold your horses, engaging the godly imagination. Engaging or biblical, ima somebody say imagination. Is it biblical? Yeah, absolutely biblical. I'll give you three verses at least for that, but I'm, for the time sake, I'll give you one right now. Is it? Imagination. Somebody say imagination. <coughs> we need to train our mind to think and imagine things biblically. When our mind is not surrendered to will of God, voice of God, that's when they will allow all those kinds of wild imagination. When our mind is not surrendered to God, that's why James says we are all enticed by our evil desire. One translation says our evil imagination and we fall into prey of the sin. Hallelujah. But when we learn to engage ourselves into biblical imagination, actually that is the word given in the Greek language, melatao. That's the word means meditation. Meditation means godly imagination. Are we there? Godly imagination. Hallelujah. Praise God. Imagining means visualizing in your mind to construct the picture. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 20. We all know this verse because it's a blessing, isn't it? Ephesians 2 20. Uh, NIV and then we can already amplify. Now to him who is able to immeasurably do more than we can ask or... He can do more than you can imagine. It means God says imagine. Imagine is not a bad thing. Are we there? God says I will give you more than you can imagine. It means you imagine. What is dreams for us? Not saying dreams what God gives. But what is dreams? Do you have dreams for your life? I have dreams for my life. What is dreams? Dreams is my imagination. That this is what I really want to be. As an individual, as a family, as a church. Why? What is it? It's an imagination. 
Is it there right now? No, it's not there. Is it real reality? I, it's not right now. Is it realistic? I don't care because I'm going to trust God to make it a reality. Is it? But we all have imagination. Are we there? Let's read Amplified. Now to him who is by consequence of action of his power that is at work within us, is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly. I like that word, super abundant. Far above, above or above that we dare ask or think. What is think? Infinitely beyond our highest prayer, desires, thoughts, hopes or dreams. It's okay to have dreams. It's okay to have dreams for your future. But God says, Word of God says, we have to allow the Word of God through the Spirit of God to construct the picture in our mind. And I tell you sincerely, I tell you sincerely, you know, we, we were in Gujarati Bhakti, so we were talking about Revelation chapter 1. And I've talked about this Revelation chapter 4 for the last 7, 8 years. Anytime I want to preach about worship, I, I'll pull out that picture. Because not it is a scripture anymore, I have this mental picture in my head. I don't need to open the scripture because I have that picture in my head. I can just look in my head and I can see God like that. Why? Because I allowed word of God to portray that imagination in my head. Are we there? Does it make sense or is it too complicated? Okay, simple. Okay, praise God. See, Bible says, hallelujah, book of Psalms says, serve him in the beauty of his holiness. How does the beauty of his holiness look like? So my mind, I said, Lord, what does it look like? Sometimes God will show something. Sometimes God will allow you to think and make a picture out of it. Isn't it? And you may, okay, beauty of holiness means something that you are holy but you're not scared of. You feel serene in my mind. He's so holy that he's beautiful. You know, have you seen a bride? Have you, have you seen a bride? Bride dressed in a bridal gown? Nobody wears black gown. You know? Because white is spotless. It's a picture of beauty and purity. Does it, is it beautiful? Why? Because it is pure. It is beautiful not because she is dressed up nicely. It is, it is beautiful because it, it, it portrays purity. There is a beauty associated with purity. Isn't it? Let me, just, let me tell you. Revelation chapter 1 says something like that. Isn't it? He says... I don't have the scripture, I, I have it in my mind, so I'm going to say it from there. He says, I saw the Lord, and he says he was wearing a white gown from head to toe, like, like from all the way. Just think, imagine for one second, in your mind, God is wearing a white gown. He said, on, on, on his chest, there's a golden shash. This was golden shash going across his chest. Now he says, his eyes were like flames of fire, and his mouth comes a two-edged sword, and his feet is like burnished bronze. So now every time I see God or think about God, this picture is in my mind. Why? Because I have allowed my imagination and meditate upon that biblical scripture to create a mental image in my mind about who God is. Most important thing, remember most important, that image has to be backed by the word of God. Don't make any image. Otherwise, then it's, that's an, then it's an idol. They thought Yahweh is like a bull. He's not a bull. Why? Because they did not went back to the word of God. We need to go to the word of God to create a mental image into our mind. This is what it is. Or this is what who God is. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. You know, while, while I was being prayed over, this is my prayer. Every time anybody, and again, not for man's glory. Again, I'm saying it very simply. So just every time I receive honor, I, I have this picture that this crown and I'm laying it down at Jesus' feet. So whenever we are praying or whenever we are worshipping or whenever somebody says something, I just, I just like instantly have this picture in my mind that I am in the throne of God. And there are 24 elders and, and I am also there. And I'm just laying this down along with this elder, just giving every honor at the feet of Lord Jesus. Because every high accolade has only one place, it is at the feet of Jesus Christ. Isn't it? So it's easy for me to imagine that thing. It's, is it a biblical imagination? Absolutely. Absolutely. Why imagine? Because can you tell you? Imagination, you can see things without seeing it. When you see things, your desire to get it. When you see the presence of God, your desire to get to the presence of God. Bible says Genesis chapter 3, Eve saw the fruit, that's why she wanted the fruit. If she didn't have seen it, she wouldn't have wanted the fruit. 
isn't it? Hallelujah. Bible says, Hallelujah, Galatians chapter, uh, 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 Genesis chapter 13. Lot saw the land that it was beautiful. His spirit was compelled to, can I get that land? Why? Because I saw it. Isn't it? So what happens? You know, you know, even, even the negative example, you know, Joshua chapter 17, Bible says, Akan saw that Egyptian garment, so sorry, Babylonian garments. And he said, I want to have it. So when you see things, you want to have it. Are we there? Are you understanding this simple principle? Why did David commit a sin? Because he, what happens? His human spirit was compelled to have it. So now when you do imagination, biblical imagination, what happens? Praise God. This message maybe does not make sense for everybody, but it doesn't matter. If it doesn't make sense for five people, then it is worth it. What happens when you biblically imagine and imagine your head, your human spirit, not God's spirit, your human spirit will crave to have it. So when you imagine a picture of God, you're sitting at the feet of Jesus Christ, you want to have it now. Because, because you saw it. Are we there? The second principle, second principle, hallelujah. Are we there? It is important to what we imagine. Somebody say it's important to see what we imagine. Twelve spies went into the land. Ten came back plus two came back. Ten saw an Anakites and they said we cannot have it. Two saw the promised land and said we can have it. Make sure you are seeing the promised land, not Anakites in your ways. See, imagine you are being victorious in the presence of God, not the other way around. Are we there? Praise God. So second, second, Melatao means imagine. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And the third way to uh, third way third way to meditate upon the word of God. Thank you, Jesus. Is the Greek word haga means to mutter. Mutter pulao nahi. Not to utter, but mutter. I just you know he was talking. Pastor Viral was talking to himself. That was a bad one. I have a good team. I talk to them. Okay, <laughs> but that's okay. I'll take it. It was a good joke though. Mutter means you're speaking under your breath. You're speaking under your, you're not shouting out, you know, bam, bam, bam. You're not pulling down stronghold, you're just muttering. That's actually a Hebrew word given there, hallelujah, to meditate. You are, you have the word, but now you're muttering it. You're muttering it. You're muttering it few times. You're muttering it, breaking it down. You're speaking it. Bass play, you're driving by yourself, you can do it. Is it? Or another way, put a headphone and you do it. Nobody hears you because you cannot hear yourself. Is it? Praise God. Mutter is very important, hallelujah, praise God, to speak forth. When you mutter, you are bringing, you are speaking faith. You are speaking faith. You are speaking faith. You know, when you mutter, what does it mean? You are bringing the word of God that is implanted in your heart. First uh, James chapter 1, 21, it says, you know, it says, the word that is implanted, isn't it? Receive the word with meekness and, and, and humility that is implanted in your heart which is able to save your souls. The one that is implanted, now you start muttering, you're talking, you're just speaking. You're just like, you know, even talking, you're walking, you're doing rotely. You know, for oh God of peace. For oh God of peace. Oh, tension, chair, but he's a God of peace. He's a God of peace. I have many troubles, but he's a God of peace. His name is Shalom. He is the Prince of Peace. That's why I have peace, because he's a God of peace. Now you're muttering it. You're speaking forth faith. You know, Bill Johnson gave a sermon, there's a lot of our situation are self-fulfilled pro prophecies. You know, what is, we, we speak anything sometimes. I know you don't, but our mind is not renewed, we speak anything. You know, I've heard parents speaking, Anu ka suni Anu. Wow. Are you prophesying over your child? Anu ka suni Anu. Isn't it? Your word has power. Isn't it? And then when nothing happened, your prophecy got fulfilled. Isn't it? So make sure we speak faith. We speak the word of God. We speak what we are meditating upon. Are we there so far? Okay, let me give you two words and go to the last one. Hosea chapter 14, verse number 2. Hosea chapter 14, verse 2, and then we're going to talk about Job chapter 20. Oh, yeah. Take word with you and go where? Return to the Lord. Get the word. Go back to the Lord with the word. Get the word. Go back, go back where? Return to the Lord with the same word that you got. Isn't it? So you're muttering, you're speaking, you're meditating. And let God do a certain things into your life. When you speak things, when you speak word into your house, it's a very powerful thing. I want to encourage you, if you if your schedule permit, if nobody's in the house, start speaking the word. You know, read the Bible loudly. Book of Proverbs loudly. Even these 40 verses, speak loudly in your house. Don't do anything. Don't ex Just speak loudly because spoken word is powerful. Job, Job chapter 20. 
Is it 20 or 22? Yeah, Job chapter 20, 28. It says, oh, is it? No, that's not the word. Is that a word? Job 20, 20, is that the verse? Okay. Okay, that's okay. We'll come back to it later. Praise God. The third thing I want to say, murder. Number one. Number one, what was the number one? Silence. Second thing is biblical. And third thing is to mutter. Isn't it? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now, the last point I want to make, and I want to give you practical things. You know, quick practical things. What do you need to meditate upon? What do you need to meditate upon? Isn't it? Areas that you and I need to meditate upon the word of God. Areas. Try make it simple. Simple. Okay. You can have more than this areas. It's, this is not an inclusive list, but this is just to help you out to get started. Are we there? We're going to talk about five areas. Somebody say five areas. We're going to give you five verses to meditate in that area. So meditate, you know, just engage this week, meditate upon, you know, one day I'm going to meditate upon this verse. Just meditate upon it. And if you have another verse to meditate, please do so. There is no compulsion here. Yeah? Five areas, I'm going to tell you five areas that I think most of you need all five areas, so some of you need less than. Okay. It starts with F just for the rhyme sake. Family, finance, future, failure, and fitness. Family, finance, future, failure, and fitness. Okay, let's talk about family. You know, how to meditate upon the word of God about family. Family is God's divine unit. God made a family. God is planned for the family. God is planned through the family. We are added to God's family. Family is important to God. Your family is a gift of God. You chose your friend, but your family, God gave it to you. Are you there? See, this is, I have 10 verses written down in the book. I pray over my family. I thank God for my family. Every day these 10 verses and my house as well. Isn't it? Praise God. I'll give you two verses. Psalm 118 verse number 5. Psalm 1181 verse number 5. What is wrong with me today? No, that's not nice. Okay. I'll find that verse. Let's read Proverbs 12.7. Bible says the wicked are overthrown and are no more. But the house of the righteous will stand. Does your Bible say that? And if you love Lord Jesus Christ and if you are saved by the blood of Lord Jesus Christ, Bible calls you righteous. Is it? And Bible says the house of the righteous will you know fast forward to New Testament there is an allegory of the house that does not stand. And the house that stands. How do you know the house will stand when the only way to taste the standing capacity of a house when it is faced with the torrents of life? He says, no matter what situation will come, but the house of the righteous will stand. So this is how I meditate, isn't it? And I wanted to meditate. Okay, Lord, your word says house of the righteous will stand. I am a righteous. So my house will stand and my house must stand. Stand against war. And I'm just thinking, just thinking, not, no cross-referencing, no, no commentary, no encyclopedia, no nothing. Let your mind go to the word of God. Let mind your let, mind will say, you know, you know, remember Jesus said about those two houses? He says, one house fell because it was built upon a sand. But other house stood. You know, why Jesus talk about that house stood? Every house stands. Both houses were standing till the problem came. Till the challenge came, both houses were standing. When God says, my house will, will, will go there. My house will stand, it means, yes, that's the verse, Jimmy. My house will stand means, when the torrents come, my house will stand. When the wind comes, my house will stand. When the you know, tsunami comes, my house will stand. When the attack of the enemy comes, my house will stand. Because my Bible says, house of the righteous will stand stand. So I do not fear torrents. I do not fear worry, uh, uh, economy. I do not fear this. I do not fear that. I, uh, life is not where it's supposed to be, but my Bible says, my house shall stand. My house shall stand. What I'm doing, I'm meditating upon the scripture. My stress is gone. My anxiety is gone. My fear is gone. But now I also have a prayer point for my house. Lord, I pray and prophesy that the house of the righteous will stand. Second verse for the house. Two words for the house. Right? Or family. 
house and family is kind of almost parallel. This is the word. I love this verse. The voice of rejoicing and salvation. Voice of rejoicing is where? Is in the tent of the righteous. Lord, if my children are screaming, that's the house of rejoicing. They are running around like crazy. That's a house of rejoicing. You know, if we are laughing our heart loud, it's a house of rejoicing. You know, if you know if we are finding comfort in a house, it's a house of rejoicing in salvation. Isn't it? So Lord, I am so blessed with my house. Not as a structure, but where I'm living. Not as a, what it looks from outside, but what is inside. My abode. See, what I'm doing, I'm meditating. Now I'm thankful for my house. I'm thankful for my family. You know, I'm thankful for everything that is around me. Is, that, is, the, is this a family we talked about? Is it? Yeah, family. Praise God. Let me do one more verse, okay? One more verse. One more verse. Family deserves some more. Isn't it? Praise God. Thank you. Psalm 128.3. Every day my prayer. 128.3. Is it? Praise God. Righteous man, Nivas Gunj. Righteous man, this is for you. His wife shall be like a fruitful line. Vini, what is it in Hindi? Ah. Lata. His wife shall be like a fruitful vine and his children should be like olive shoots around his table. Lord, thank God. Thank you for my wife. It's easy to find faults, isn't it? It's so easy, right? I mean... It's easy to find fault in me. I can easily find fault in you. Husband can find easily fault in wife. Wife can find easy faults in husband. Nobody is perfect. That's why you're both together. Isn't it? Because if you're a perfect husband, I don't think you can find perfect wife because there is none. If you think you're a perfect wife, you cannot find any husband because there is no perfect husband. But what is God has given you is like a fruitful wine. So Lord, my wife is a fruitful. Lord, my wife is a fruitful vine. Because your word says she is fruitful. Not just fruitful just to bear children, but fruitful in the terms of bearing the fruit of the Spirit. She is so loving, so kind. Isn't it? She is so patient. Of course, you've been married 22 years. Who is patient? Isn't it? No, you caught all nine fruit and said, Lord, thank you for my wife. Because she is fruitful. Are we there? Husbands, are we there? Wives, you can do to your husband as well. Thank you, Lord, that you have planted me as a fruitful vine in this man's house. I am so blessed that my pot is good. <laughs> I am so blessed this soil is good because I am in this man's house. You have made me his wife. And I just thank God. The Bible says, and the children should be like olive shoots. You know olive shoots? You know? Shoots are little. They grow faster. And they are stronger and they live longer. Lord, I thank God for my children. Are they perfect? They are not. How can they be perfect? Because their parents are not perfect. But they are my children. They are a gift for God for you. Gift, for God, gift, gift from God to me and my wife. And I just thank God for them. I thank God for what they do. I thank God for their life. And I, you know, I just appreciate and just being thankful of parent of this amazing children that God has given. What am I doing? I'm meditating. And now what God is doing, God is creating a value for my family. God is making me thankful. And my stress is not there anymore. What happened? I just meditated upon scripture. But when we try to compare the magazine cover to our wives or husband, anxiety and everything gone. That's not real. Isn't it? Praise God. Are we there? Second point. First was family. What is second, Jimmy? Finance. I put it second for a reason. Because family and finance sometimes go. Family, finance, and health go together. Any of that is in discord, that family will have discord. Isn't it? Okay, I'm going to read this verse. I love this verse. 2 Corinthians 9 8. We're going to read the few translations. We have a couple of translations, right? Is that it? Okay, now God is able. Okay, so anything that you want to think about your finance, I want to give you first thing. Before you think about your finance, I want to tell you about God. And God is able. Lord, I'm in a big mess. God is. Oh, it's a big hole. I'm not. God is. Long time EI is also running out. God is able. 
God is able to make all grace abound towards you. Am I, am I? Number one thing that I am meditating. The Lord, you are not just a creator God, but you are my father. And as you are my father, you are an able creator, but you are also an able father. You can do anything for the world, but I am not thinking in that aspect. I am thinking because you are my father and you are able. You have good plans for me. You know, you, you desire, and, and not only you desire, you can do, you can clean any mess that I am in. Why? Because you're able. Is that? Then what does he do? How many grace? How much grace? How much grace? See, one translation, one place it says, God says we receive grace upon grace. It means little grace, more grace, more grace, more grace. And then the highest level of grace is all grace. To bless you, how much grace God gives? All that is that God has. All grace. And all grace is what? Bible says all grace abound where? Somebody say towards me. God is sending all grace to me. All grace to me. This translation is difficult but I want you to read it. Then we can go a simpler translation. So that you always have. Not sometimes. Not there is a good season, not there when there is a good sale, but always. Now there is a two, two levels. Always have all sufficiency. It means my needs are met. Sufficient is always. There is a three stages of God's blessing. Not enough, just enough, more than enough. Egypt, not enough. Wilderness, just enough. Promised land, more than enough. God always wants to bring us to the place where there is more than enough. God is not a God of just enough. He is not. He is not just. He is always more than enough. Is it? All grades abounds towards you. Having all sufficiency in these things. Sufficient. Thank you. Bill bare gya. Chale gadi chale. Mehna thi mehna. Then he says, May heaven avoid us. For what? For every good work. Not only God is able, but he says, I'm going to send all grace. So your needs are met, but you have more than that, so you'll do good works. Okay, do we have another translation, Jimmy? Please. Okay, okay. It's mouthful, but you can go. God is able to make all grace. Every favor and blessing come to you in abundance, so that you may always and under all circumstances, whatever the need be, self Sufficient. And then he says, possessing enough to require no aid or support, furnishing abundance for every good work in charitable donation. Is it? Are we there? Listen to me. Meditate upon this thing. Your God is able. Your God is able. Your God is able. Your God is able. And he will send all the grace that you will enough and you will abundance to do more work. And I meditate my upon it. I meditate upon it. Because it's true. Why it's true? Because the word of God. Finance. Third thing. Future? Future. Yes. Future. We think a lot about future. My plan, this plan, that plan. Jeremiah 21, 9, 11, we memorized it, but we didn't meditate upon it. Meditate upon it now. Is it? Number one thing. God says, for I know the thought that I think towards you. So I'm meditating, Lord, thank you that you are thinking about my future. You are thinking about my future. You are thinking about my future. And you said these thoughts are of peace, not evil. To give you future and to give you hope. One translation says that the plans that I have for you is not to harm you, but to bless you and to give you future and to hope. Let me tell you, God is, I'm not sure about you, but God is thinking about my future. And that future does not start when I go to heaven. The future starts the moment I receive Jesus. God is thinking about my future. God is thinking about my future. God is thinking about, and that's what I'm meditating upon. Lord, present does not look like we can have a good future, but thank God that it's not in my hand, but it is in your hand. So I trust you, and the thing that you thought towards me may come to pass in Jesus. Is it? Family, finance, 
future. The fourth thing, failure. What happened when we fail? And when I say fail, I'm not saying because we messed up. Fail for any reason. Whether we messed up or whether external circumstances, whatever reason when we fail. What do you do when you fail? How do you lift yourself up? What do you meditate upon? You know? You know? Lord, you say you didn't, you'll not fail me, but I still feel like failure. What do you do? God said, okay, I have a scripture for you. Psalm 40, I, sorry, Isaiah 41 and verse number 10. Is it? Fear not, for I am with you. Now, I might think about the scripture. Lord, your word says, I am with you. And I am means you are right now with me. I am means I have failed right now. I have failed for whatever reason. Is it my mistake, somebody else's mistake, whatever it is. I have failed. But according to your word, as I am reading right now, even in my failure, you are with me. Can I tell you something? Just side note. We live in a world there is a pressure to perform. Pressure to? And I'm, I'm, I'm going to say very simply, listen to me. I'm going to use very less words to explain this. So I hope you get it. If not, I pray the Spirit of God will teach you. There's a pressure to perform. We grew up in India. If the most of you grew up in India, to banish nahi to daru kasu nahi thai. Pressure to? You do something so that you will hope, otherwise you will not have hope. If you do this, then people will like you. You do perform so that people will like you. There's a constant pressure. And that pressure, pressure eats us up. Let me tell you, we'll fail one time or we'll not be able to keep everybody happy, we'll not be able to perform to everybody's expectation. And I'm saying, I will fail you, you will fail me, and that will go till Jesus comes. Okay? Just say it right there. When I know that, that God is with me, I am free from pressure to perform. What do I have to do for God to be with me? What does he say, God says? God says, if you do this, then I'll be with you. Is he say that? I'm with you. When? When you mess up, I'm there. When you fail, I'm there. When you make mistake, I'm there. When somebody mistakes you, I'm there. I am always there. I am not going to leave you. Because I promised to you and I made a covenant with you. There is no prerequisite of performance for me to be with you. Because I am with you by the virtue of who I am. I am your father and I will be with you. So I am released from the pressure to perform. I don't have to perform. I need to do something to... God is with me. Coming back to the failure part. In failure God is with me. Do not be dismayed. For I am your God. Dismayed means don't get shocked at things that happen to you. Are, are you there? Oh, I, I can't imagine this person did that to me. I said, don't get shocked. I, I don't, can't imagine this happened to me. Don't get shocked. Is it? Don't get dismayed. Is it? That's why Jesus says in New Testament, he says, don't get shocked when people treat you badly. Because they treated me badly. Is it? So you know what God is saying? God is not saying that when people treat you badly, he says, God, they treated you badly. They treated me badly. No, no, it's not God is saying. God is saying, stop your point of acceptance from the way people treat you. Your point of expect acceptance is that you are my son and you are my daughter. That's your vantage point is. I will help you. I will. When you fail, God says, I will help you. Anybody want to hear that? I want to hear that. God says, I, Lord, I, I want to do a lot of things, but I fail. I say, I'll help you. Say, Lord, you'll help me. And then he says, I will uphold you in my righteous right hand. Lord, I fail, but don't let me fall. Failing is okay. Falling is not good, Father. So, Lord, thank you. You allow me to fail, but you will not allow me to fall. Why? Because I am in your righteous right hand. Meditate. Think about that. Okay, family, finance, future, failure. And the health, which is fitness. I just put it there. Means health. You know, Jeremiah 17, 14. Simple words. Heal me, Lord. Heal me, Lord. And I will be. Jeremiah said, Lord, you heal me, and I will heal. There's no nine yards towards it. Lord, you heal me, I'll be healed. I believe that. Save me, O oh Lord, 
and I shall be saved. Isn't it? For you are my praise. See, see, sometimes for the Christians, no, and I, I say it's a good thing, but sometimes it becomes a bad thing. For Christians, when you're walking in the ways of God, when we get sick, we start this whole assessment checklist. Dr. Pastor B.Y. Kelle kelle khadu, supi du, apadu bhi checklist. Mein kasu kariu? Koye kasu kariu? Is it the curse? Is it somebody's action? Is it demonic attack? The whole checklist goes. Overthinking. Heal me Lord, I'll be healed. Whether it is an attack of an enemy, whether it is a curse, whether it is whatever. Heal me O Lord, I will be healed. Save me O Lord, and I will be saved. Heal me O Lord, I will be healed. Save me O Lord, I will be saved. Is it? Praise God. Are we there so far? I'm going to close it right now. But I'm going to close with one verse. Is it? We have one verse, right? First Timothy? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Three verses there. First Timothy, you know, it's been read for only young people, and I feel bad about it. It should be read for all of us, isn't it? Not just for young people. Isn't it? First Timothy chapter 1, 12, 13, 14, 15. Isn't it? Let no one despise your youth. Don't consider you little less. Hallelujah. But be an example to believers in four areas, isn't it? Hallelujah. Word, conduct, hope, faith, and purity. Sorry, five areas. Word, young people, old people, we need to be example in the word. Second example in the conduct, how we conduct ourselves. Third example in how we, oh, did you notice it's getting harder and harder? But that's okay. You can do it. Fourth thing, an example in the, an example in the purity. Be example. Verse number four, 13. Till I come, I give attention to the reading and the exhortation of the doctrine. Till I come, read the word. Simple. Verse number 14. Do not neglect the gift that I have given to you, by what you receive by the laying of the hands, by the prophecy and the laying of the hands and the leadership. Whatever gift you have received it, do not neglect it. Do not neglect it. Verse number 15. Now in all those things, meditate. Meditate, meditate, meditate being an example of love, conduct, faith, purity, spirit. Meditate the gift that I have received. Meditate constantly on it. Meditate means sit in the silence, think about it. Second thing is have imagination that you have all those things. And third thing is speak about those things into your life. Meditate on these things, give yourself entirely to them so that, so that, I know we don't believe in showing things, but Paul sometimes said that, so that your progress, your progress be evident to, to all. All can see your progress. Are we there? Praise God. I think we have enough things to meditate upon this six days. There is lie ahead till we meet again. Can we rise up and, you know, I invite the worship team for communion. If I don't, then I'll be in trouble. Okay. Please come. Please come. Jimmy, while they come, can we put those five things just quickly? As you, as you pray right now, you know, as you participate in a communion, number one thing that I pray for you, that when you partake in the communion, God releases us from every anxiety, fear associated with any of this area of our life. Destroy the thought process that eats us up and give us stress and anxiety, but rather we'll have meditation upon the word of God, on the truth of the word of God. And the third thing I would say, third thing I would say, it will create an expectation from the word of God and the presence of God that what you meditate upon will come to pass in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us as our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and power and glory forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord uh, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his contents upon you and give you peace. Now with the grace of 
Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Heavenly Father and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all from this time forth and evermore. In Jesus' name, amen. Shalom, blessings, and greetings to me, all of you. May you engage yourself in the Word of God and meditation of the Word of God. Thank you for being with us, those who are online. May your week be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen.